the Sveta Svatara Upanishad. Disciples inquire within themselves, what is the cause of this universe? Is it Brahman? Whence do we come? Why do we live? Where shall we at last find rest? Under whose command are we bound by the law of happiness and its opposite? Time, space, law, chance, matter, primal energy, intelligence, none of these nor a combination of these can be the final cause of the universe, for they are effects and exist to serve the soul. Nor can the individual self be the cause, for being subject to the law of happiness and misery, it is not free. The seers, absorbed in contemplation, saw within themselves the ultimate reality, the self-luminous being, the one God who dwells as a self-conscious power in all creatures. He is the one without a second. Deep within all beings he dwells, hidden from sight by the coverings of the gunas, sattva, rajas, and tamas. He presides over time, space, and all apparent causes. This vast universe is a will. Upon it, all creatures that are subject to birth, death, and rebirth. Round and round it turns and never stops. It is the will of Brahman. As long as the individual self thinks it is separate from Brahman, it revolves upon the will in bondage to the laws of birth, death, and rebirth. But when through the grace of Brahman, it realizes its identity with him, it revolves upon the will no longer. It achieves immortality. He who is realized by transcending the world of cause and effect in deep contemplation is expressly declared by the scriptures to be the Supreme Brahman. He is the substance, all else the shadow. He is the imperishable. The knowers of Brahman know him as the one reality behind all that seems. For this reason, they are devoted to him, absorbed in him. They attain freedom from the will of birth, death, and rebirth. The Lord supports this universe, which is made up of perishable and imperishable, the manifest and the unmanifest. The individual soul, forgetful of the Lord, attaches itself to pleasure and thus is bound. When it comes to the Lord, it is freed from all its fetters. Mind and matter, master and servant, both have existed from the beginning this time. The Maya, which unites them, has also existed from beginningless time. When all three, mind, matter, and maya, are known as one with Brahman, then it is realized that the self is infinite and has no part in action. Then it is revealed that the self is all. Matter is perishable. The Lord, the, the destroyer of ignorance, is imperishable, immortal. He is the one God the Lord of the perishable and of all souls. By meditating on him, by uniting oneself with him, by identifying oneself with him, one ceases to be ignorant. No God and all fetters will be loosed. Ignorance will vanish. Birth, death, and rebirth will be no more. Meditate upon him and transcend physical consciousness. Thus, will you reach union with the Lord of the universe. Thus will you become identified with him who is one without a second. In him, all your desires will find fulfillment. The truth that you are always united with the Lord. The truth is that you are always united with the Lord. 
but you must know this. Nothing further is there to know. Meditate, and you will rel and you will realize that mind, matter, and Maya, the power which unites mind and matter, are but three aspects of Brahman, the one reality. Fire, though present in the fire sticks, is not perceived until one stick is rubbed against another. The self is like that fire. It is realized in the body by meditation on the sacred syllable Om. Let your body be the stick that is rubbed. Sacred syllable Om, a stick that is rubbed against it. Thus shall you realize God, who is hidden within the body as fire is hidden within the wood, like oil in the sesame seeds, butter in cream, water in the river. Fire in tinder. The self dwells within the soul. Realize him through thought, through truthfulness and meditation. Like butter in cream is the self in everything. Knowledge of the self is gained through meditation. The self is Brahman. By Brahman is all ignorance destroyed. To realize God, first control the outgoing senses and harness the mind, then meditate upon the light in the heart of the fire. Meditate, that is, upon pure consciousness as distinct from ordinary consciousness of the intellect. Thus, the self, the inner reality, may be seen behind physical appearance. Control your mind so that the ultimate reality, the self-luminous Lord, may be revealed. Strive earnestly for eternal bliss. With the help of the mind and the intellect, keep the senses from attaching themselves to objects of pleasure. They will then be purified by the light of the inner reality, and that light will be revealed. The wise control their minds and unite their hearts with the infinite, the omniscient, the all-pervading Lord. Only discriminating souls practice spiritual disciplines. Great is the glory of the self-luminous being, the inner reality. Hear all, ye children of immortal bliss, also ye gods who dwell in the high heavens, follow only in the footsteps of the illumined ones, and by continuous meditation merge both mind and intellect in the eternal Brahman, the glorious Lord will be revealed to you. Control the vital force, set fire to the self within by the practice of meditation. Be drunk with the wine of divine love. Thus shall you reach perfection. Be devoted to the eternal Brahman. Unite the light within you with the light of Brahman. Thus will the source of ignorance be destroyed and you will rise above karma. Sit upright, holding the chest, throat, and head erect. Turn the senses and the mind inward to the lotus of the heart. Meditate on Brahman with the help of the syllable Om. Cross the fearful currents of the ocean of worldliness by means of the raft of Brahman. That sacred Om, uh, that sacred syllable Om. With earnest effort, all the senses in check, controlling the breath, Regulate the vital activities. As a charioteer holds back his restive horse, his resistive, his restive horses. So does a preserving. So does a persevering aspirant hold back his mind. Retire to a solitary place, such as a mountain cave, or a sacred spot. The place must be protected from wind and rain. 
and must have a smooth, clean floor, free from pebbles and dust. It must not be damp and must be free from disturbing noises. It must be pleasing to the eye and quiet to the mind. Seated there, practice meditation and other spiritual exercises. As you practice meditation, you may see in vision forms resembling snow, crystals, smoke, fire, lightning, fireflies, the sun, the moon. These are signs that you are on your way to the revelation of Brahman. As you become absorbed in meditation, you will realize that the self is separate from the body. And for this reason, will not be affected by disease, old age, or death. The first signs of progress on the path of yoga are health, a sense of physical lightness, clearness of complexion, a beautiful voice, an agreeable odor of the person, and freedom from craving. As a soiled piece of metal, when it has been cleaned, shines brightly, so the dweller in the body, when he has realized the truth of the self, loses his sorrow and becomes radiant with bliss. The yogi experiences directly the truth of Brahman. By realizing the light of the self within, he is freed from all impurities. He is pure, the birthless, the bright, he is the one God, present in the north, the east, the south, and the west. He is the creator. He enters into all wombs. He alone is now born as all beings, and he alone is to be born as all beings in the future. He is within all persons as the inner self, facing in all directions. Let us adore the Lord, the luminous one who is in fire, who is in water, who is in plants and trees, who pervades the whole universe, the one absolute impersonal existence, together with the inscrutable Maya, appears as the Divine Lord, the personal God, endowed with manifold glories. By his divine power, he holds, dom he holds dominion over all all the worlds. At the periods of creation and dissolution of the universe, he alone exists. Those who realize him become immortal. The Lord is one without a second. Within man he dwells, and within all other beings. He projects the universe and maintains it and withdraws it into himself. His eyes are everywhere. His face his arms, his feet, are in every place. Out of himself, he has produced the heavens and the earth, and with his arms and his wings, he holds them together. He is the origin and support of the gods. He is the Lord of all. He confers bliss and wisdom upon those who are devoted to him. He destroys their sins and their sorrows. He punishes those who break his laws. He sees all and knows all. May he endow us with good thoughts. O Lord, clothed in thy most holy form, which is calm and blissful, and which destroys all evil and ignorance, look upon us and make us glad. O Lord, thou hast revealed the sacred syllable Om which is one with thee. In thy hands it is a weapon with which to destroy ignorance. O protector of thy devotee, do not conceal thy benign person. Thou art the supreme Brahman. Thou art infinite. Thou hast assumed the forms of all creatures, remaining hidden in them. Thou pervadest all things. Thou art the one God of the universe. Those who, 
those who realize the become immortal. Said the great seer, Svetasvatara, I have known beyond all darkness that great person of going a few legends. Only by knowing him does one conquer death. There is no other way of escaping the will of birth, death, and rebirth. There is nothing superior to him, nothing different from him, nothing subtler or greater than he. Alone he stands, changeless, self-luminous. He, the Great One, fills this universe. Though he fills the universe, he transcends it. He is untouched by its sorrow. He has no form. Those who know him become immortal. Others remain in the depths of misery. The Lord God, all-pervading and omnipresent, dwells in the hearts of all beings. Full of grace, he ultimately gives liberation to all creatures by turning their faces toward him. He is the innermost self. He is the great Lord. He it is that reveals the purity within the heart by means of which he who is pure being may be reached. He is the ruler. He is the great light shining forever. This great being assuming a form of the size of a thumb forever dwells in the heart of all creatures as their innermost self. He can be known directly by the purified mind through spiritual discrimination. Knowing him, men become immortal. This great being has a thousand heads, a thousand eyes, and a thousand feet. He envelops the universe. Though transcendent, Though transcendent, he is to be meditated upon as residing in the lotus of the heart. At the center of the body, ten fingers above the navel, he alone is all this. What has been, what shall be, he has become the universe. Yet he remains forever changeless and is the lord of immortality. His hands and feet are everywhere. His eyes and mouths are everywhere. His ears are everywhere. He pervades everything in the universe. Without organs of sense, yet reflecting the activities of the sense, he is the Lord and ruler of all. He is the friend and refuge of all. He resides in the body, the city of nine gates. He sports in the world without, in innumerable forms. He is master, uh, he is the master, the ruler of the whole world, animate and inanimate. He moves fast, though without feet. He grasps everything, though without hands. He sees everything, though without ears. He hears everything, though without ears. I think I said that wrong. He sees everything, though without eyes. He hears everything, though without ears. He knows all that is, but no one knows him. He is called the Supreme, the Great One. Subtler than the subtlest, greater than the greatest. The self is hidden in the heart of all creatures. Through his grace, a man loses his cravings, transcends grief, and realizes him as Supreme. As Brahman Supreme. O Brahman Supreme, formless art thou, and yet thou bringest forth many forms. Thou bringest fo them forth, and then withdrawest them to thyself. Fill us with thoughts of thee. Thou art the fire, thou art the sun, thou art the air, thou art the moon. Thou art the starry firmament. Thou art Brahman supreme. Thou art the waters. Thou, the creator of all. Thou art woman. Thou art man. 
Thou art the youth, thou art the maiden. Thou art the old man, tottering with his staff. Thou facest everywhere. Thou art the dark butterfly. Thou art the green parrot with red eyes. Thou art the thundercloud, the seasons, the sea. Without beginning art thou, beyond time, beyond space. Thou art he from whom sprang the three worlds. Maya is thy divine consort wedded to thee. Thou art her master, her ruler. Red, white, and black is she. Each color a guna. Many are her children. The rivers, the mountains, flower, stone, and tree. Beast, bird, and man, in every way like herself. Thou, spirit in flesh, forgiving what thou art. Forgetting what thou art. Unitest with Maya, but only for a season. Parting from her at last, thou regainest thyself. Thou Brahman immortal, and thou woven of clay. Like two beautiful birds, golden of plumage, companions inseparable, perched high up on the branches of the self same tree. As many uh, as man thou tastest. The sweet fruits of thee, the sweet and bitter fruits. But as Brahman, master of Maya, thou remainest unseen, immobile, calming, calmly observing, forgetting his oneness with thee, bewildered by his weakness, full of sorrow is man. But let him look close on thee, know thee as himself, O Lord most worshipful, and beyond thy glory. Lo, all his heavy sorrow is turned to joy. Changeless thou art, supreme, pure. In the dwell, in thee dwell the gods, the source of all scriptures thou art. Yet what sh shall scriptures avail if they be smooth on the lip, but absent from the heart? To him who knows thee comes fullness to him alone. Thou art Lord and master of Maya. Man is her slave. With Maya uniting, thou hast brought forth the universe. The source of all scriptures thou art, the source of all creeds. The universe is thy Maya, and thou, great God, her Lord. Wherever the eye falls, there within every form thou dwellest. One thou art, one only. Born from many wombs, thou hast become many. Unto thee all return. Thou, Lord God, bestowest all blessings. Thou, the light, thou, the adorable one, who forever, or whoever, finds thee, finds infinite peace. Thou art Lord God of all gods, all the worlds rest in thee. Thou art ruler of the beast, two-footed, four-footed. Our hearts worship be thine. Thou art the blissful Lord, subtler than the subtlest. In thee alone is their peace. Thou sole guardian of the universe, thou Lord of all. In the hearts of thy creatures, thou hidest thyself. Gods and seers become one with thee. Those who know thee die not. Of all religions, thou art the source, the light of thy knowledge shining. There is, no, there is nor day, nor night, nor being, 
nor non-being. Thou alone art. Thou alone art. Thou alone art. Thou the light, imperishable, adorable. Great glory is thy name. No one is there beside thee, no one equal to thee. Invisible is thy form, invisible to mortal eyes, the seers alone. In their purified hearts, they alone see thee. They alone are immortal, neither man nor female art thou, nor neuter whatsoever form thou assumest that thou art. Thou dost pervade the universe. Thou art consciousness itself. Thou art creator of time. All knowing art thou. At thy bidding, Maya, thy power divine projects this visible universe, projects name and form. Thou art the primal being. Thou appearest as the universe of illusion and dream. Thou art beyond time, indivisible, infinite, the adorable one. Let a man meditate on thee within his heart. Let him consecrate himself to thee. And thou, infinite Lord, wilt make thyself known to him. Thou, womb and tomb of the universe and its abode, Thou, source of all virtue, destroyer of all sins, thou art seated in the heart. When thou art seen, time and form disappear. Let a man feel thy presence. Let him behold thee within. And to him shall come peace, eternal peace. To none else, to none else, thou art the eternal among non-eternals the consciousness of the conscious. Though one, thou fillest the many, the desires of many. Let a man devote himself to, know, to knowledge of thee. Let him follow thy path, and he shall know thee. All his fetters shall be loosed. Can a man roll up the sky like a piece of skin, can he end his misery and know not thee? If the truths of these scriptures are meditated upon by a man in the highest degree devoted to God and to his guru and as to his God, they will shine forth. They will shine forth indeed. Om. Peace. Peace, peace.